Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So this is a Toyota Pro Ace electric van. And in this video, we're just gonna look at what's under the bonnet on an electric van. So this is the Toyota Pro Ace, as I said, but exactly the same van is also the Vauxhall and Opel Vivaro, the Peugeot e-Expert, the Citroen e-Dispatch, and now also the Fiat uh, Scudo. They all come with either a 50 or 75 kilowatt hour battery underneath. This one's the 50, but obviously they've all got the same gubbins under the bonnet. So let's have a look at that. So to release the bonnet, we need to open the passenger door and open it there. And these are quite high at the front and quite a, a narrow opening. So um, I've got to stand on tiptoes to get the camera at the right angle to see under here. But anyway, um, what's under the bonnet in an electric van? Well, this van is front wheel drive. So you've got an electric motor here driving the front wheels. So uh, if you don't know much about engines and things, you can sometimes look at these, particularly as they have plastic covers on the top and think it's a combustion engine because um, they look very similar. So what have we got under here? Well, as I said, this is the electric motor. Well, it's more than that. It's termed a motor stack. So the bottom there, you can see the aluminium um, motor down there. So that is driving your front wheels and there will be a reduction gearbox on the side and then drive shafts going to either wheel. And then these other units are all bolted to make one whole motor stack and these will be your charger and inverter units. And then everything that is orange is the high voltage cables. So they've all got the DC power in, which is the dangerous bit. So on all electric and hybrid vehicles, everything that's high voltage and DC is uh, colored orange. So looking at these cables here, Without uh, looking properly, I would assume these two are from the battery pack and they go round here into the front wing. And then we've also got this cable here, which is coming from the charge port. So on the side here, we've got the charge port, we've got a type two AC connector there, and then your DC rapid charging connector here, which is obviously CCS. Actually, I've just noticed there's some more orange cables down there. There are four orange cables going that way. So those will be your cables coming from the battery pack. This is probably the CCS charging cables, but I'm not going to start taking it apart to confirm all this. This is more of just a general overview. So in here, we've got a charger and inverter. So the charger is obviously taking that power from the charge port on the side, um, either AC or DC and charging the vehicle. The inverter um, is obviously doing that conversion between AC and DC power, but it is also acting as your uh, replacement and alternator because all EVs still have 12 volt batteries. So when the vehicle is switched on, there is a DC to DC converter here, converting 400 volt from the traction battery to 14 volt DC to charge your 12 volt battery. So why do you still need a standard 12 volt battery in an electric vehicle? Well, just like you, just the same as you have with a combustion engine vehicle, really, you've got to have power to use the keys, unlock the central locking and start up the vehicle. So in this case, that isn't starting a starter motor and turning an engine, but it is powering up all the ECUs, powering up the dash. And then when you turn the key to start the vehicle, you've got some contactors, which is going to enable the 400 volt traction battery. So primarily it's for safety because everything is, stand, is standard 12 volt and low power. Um, and you still need it to start the car. Uh, obviously then your lights, wipers, all the ECUs, the radio and everything is all standard 12 volt and using normal car components. So the traction battery underneath is only powering the electric motor, which drives your wheels, and also the heater and air conditioning compressor, because that requires a lot of energy. Uh, everything else is powered from the 12 volt battery. So looking on this side of the motor, we've got our air conditioning hoses, uh, an awful lot of hoses down here, a lot of black hoses. Not all of them um, are the heating and air conditioning system. A lot of them are cooling hoses as well. Um, here's our two top up points here. Uh, this has got a resistive heater, so that's probably heating uh, water. 
uh, most of them do I think all of them do actually um, and then you, you'll have an air conditioning compressor down there somewhere um, which uh, they're electric and they're generally uh, powered from the 400 volt DC traction battery here's your water reservoir and then all these hoses will be cooling this lot so all that electric motor at the bottom and then all your electronic circuits in that charger and inverter are all water cooled and obviously here's your water there and then you'll have a radiator at the front there so generally with electric vehicles you don't have much uh, cooling because it is only cooling that motor so generally you just have um, vents at the bottom here uh, going to that um, radiator there and on this fan the electric models you've even got this plastic cover which snaps in to block up the vents here because they're not required um, but obviously if this was the diesel version that bit of plastic would wouldn't be there and then there'll be additional vents which are actually behind here anyway and then here's your windscreen washer bottle that's probably the only reason why you would open up the bonnet on an EV uh, also the headlights are very nice um, and easy to get to plenty of room around them you've got all the caps there to get to your bulb so that's nice to see because normally on modern vehicles they're a nightmare um, and then you've got uh, that will be a fuse or relay box under there and that's about it um, so yeah on first looks they look pretty conventional um, but rather than burning fuel and having a fire under here you've just got an electric motor and uh, electronics but it's all water cooled still um, and obviously your fuel tank is that battery pack which sits down there under the floor and then one final little thing there's a sticker here showing a fireman's helmet and showing you how you can isolate the vehicle and on this you simply pull that little plug out there and uh, all electric vehicles will have an isolation point like that and the reason why it's got a fireman's helmet here is because that's only when the vehicle is in an accident and the fire brigade want to safely isolate the vehicle and um, isolate that DC power from the traction battery so if this vehicle had been in a crash the first thing they do uh, is open up the bonnet and pull that and then that makes the vehicle safe so there's no high voltage um, power coming out of that pack and then the final thing I'll try to show you um, obviously I'm not doing this back at the workshop where we could get it on the lift but underneath there is the battery pack so this one is the 50 kilowatt hour pack the 75 kilowatt hour pack will probably be a little bit longer so obviously there's a lot of these vans on the road with combustion engines and the electrics uh, look exactly the same. So the only way you can tell if one of these is electric, uh, obviously the Toyota version has this electric badging at the front but the others don't. So the only way you can tell is this charge port here on the front wing. Uh, if you're really eagle-eyed then you'll see this bit of plastic in the front grill blocking up the grill. They also do have the uh, a false door here which is where your diesel filler cap would be on um, an ice version and actually that's where your add blue would be on an ice version as well um, and then the only other telltale sign is obviously your electric badging but no exhaust pipe at the back so that will do for this one uh, if you found it useful please do click that thumbs up button on youtube that really does help and it allows other people to find the channel uh, do subscribe if you haven't done already i've got other videos on the channel on these vans and hundreds of other videos on evs and posting a new video at least every week often twice a week so yeah do subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you on the next video